Hello, stranger. We are going to watch how Switzerland become unconquerable. Is it though? Challenge accepted. The German is coming. So, OBF made this video. It got 2.4 million views. Let's go. Why are they unconquerable? Because they live in the mountains? Or why is that? Switzerland is the most unconquerable country on earth. And on this earth. isn't a new thing. It's been this way for centuries. No one has even dared to try for a very long time. Not even Hitler wanted to try. And knowing what I know now, I completely understand this reluctance to invade Switzerland. It's not that they'll get angry, per se. It's more so the fact that if anyone chooses to go to war with Switzerland, they'll have to deal with bombs. And no, I don't mean the Swiss German language, that is the equivalent of an atomic bomb for your ears. Viele liebe Grüße aus Zürich, der Schweiz. Oh, it's, I mean, it's a bomb. real bombs. But they won't be pointed at the enemy that though. Horrible. Instead, the Swiss will target themselves with these bombs. Now obviously what? they won't bomb their own cities where people live. Instead, they'll bomb their marvelous infrastructure. <gasps> the bridges Roads, and Roads, bridges, tunnels, you name it. Switzerland has TNT, explosives and bombs in any and all of the infrastructure that no leads way. into the country. Which might is this for real? But that's that's such a big risk for terrorism. It might sound insane, what? and it is. But Switzerland is serious about staying out of conflicts. And since there are only a few ways you can get into Switzerland by that's land, crazy. as a result of the mountains surrounding the majority of the country, the Swiss saw this as a golden opportunity to create what they saw as a necessary defense mechanism in order to keep Hitler out. And keep him out, they did. But part of the reason why Switzerland never got conquered by big European superpowers back when they were expanding right at their doorstep is that those same European superpowers decided it would probably be a good idea to have a buffer zone between them. Switzerland became that buffer zone. Mm. And since then they've Makes been sense. a neutral power in the center of Europe. By neutral, I of course mean insanely neutral. They aren't part of NATO or the EU and they only became part of the UN 19 years ago. They don't send their troops to fight in any wars, even though they're actually really good at fighting, as we can see from their history. Back in the day, other European nations would actually hire Swiss men to fight for them in wars, but they put an end to that when they lost a big war to France a few hundred years ago. These days, Switzerland doesn't fight. Yet still, they can raise an army of 800,000 almost instantly. And even That's though a lot they of are people. unlikely to ever fight in any wars, the Swiss army is... 800,000? What's the population of Switzerland? 8 million? 10% of the population can join the army immediately? Is that true? It might be pretty remarkable. You know, there is a saying. Switzerland does not have an army. Switzerland is an army, which refers to the fact that it has compulsory military service for all Swiss men. But that's not even the crazy part. Everyone that's been in that mandatory military service up until 2007 has kept all their equipment. Everyone, and I mean everyone kept their uniform, assault rifles and Even the ammunition. rifle? So that if a war were to start, they would be able to instantly jump into their military. I've been to German military service, compulsory when it was still a thing. And I didn't get to keep my rifle. That's so unfair. Their uniform at home, put their assault rifle on the back and go straight to the action. In a way, it's insanely genius, but mostly it's just insane. And the insanity doesn't stop there. Have you ever wondered what the Swiss might be hiding in the mountains? It could be gold or money, which they are probably hiding some of in there. 
But somewhere in Switzerland, inside of a mountain, there is a secret airbase in which multiple FA-18 Hornets sit ready to take action. Just imagine a Swiss Air Force pilot firing up the engines of an FA-18 Hornet behind camouflage doors inside a mountain, getting ready to take off and make a surprise attack on an unsuspecting enemy that could be on his way to bombing Switzerland right now. But little does he know, behind him a fighter jet just got released from the inside of a mountain to take him down. I don't know, it, it just seems like something out of a James Bond movie to me. And since it's highly classified information, where exactly this base is located, chances are enemies wouldn't notice before it's too late. Yeah, actually fighting in the mountains, this air base not a good idea. Because Swiss soldiers have occasionally referred to it on social media, but they've always been requested to delete their mention of the airbase promptly after. And as a senior Swiss officer has said, the name and location of the base are highly classified information. But knowing the, Swiss, the name, I'm not so concerned about where it is, more so how many there are, as there's probably more than one. What there's definitely more than one of are bunkers. You see, back when Hitler was taking over most of Europe, the Swiss realized they had to have a place they could retreat to in case Hitler did choose to invade. And since most of the population lives in flat and easily maneuverable terrain, which is a bad thing in war times by the way, they went to the mountains to build bunkers and tunnels. And while these tunnels obviously never got used for what they were intended for, they are now used for anything from aging rooms for cheese, to hotels and high-tech server vaults, where you can store information that requires that extra level of security, I guess. But bunkers aren't just limited to the Swiss Alps. You see, for a long time in Switzerland, it was required by law that when you build a house, it had to have a bunker that could fit all what? the people living in that house. Nowadays, the law has been changed a bit. That's and it's crazy. Just that every inhabitant must have a protected place that can be reached. So basically, all the houses that were built before this new law, 10 years ago, they have bunkers? That's just mind blowing. What do they do in those bunkers? Quickly from that person's place of residence. So basically you either need to install a nuke proof bunker in your basement or you have to what? pay for access to a community bunker and have a designated place in one of those. What's rather curious That's though crazy. is that since these bunkers haven't been used and probably never will get used, the Swiss typically just use them as storage rooms, you know, to make sure your wine is safe in the off chance that a nuclear bomb decides to hit your country. Wow. Or if enemy okay. tanks come knocking at the door. <laughs> tanks. As if those could even get anywhere close to Swiss soil. Don't you think the Swiss have already thought of that? Well, of course they have. You remember the explosives from earlier, right? You know, the ones they put in place to destroy all routes going into Switzerland if necessary? Yeah, those ones. If enemy tanks get past that, then first of all, well done. And second of all, you now have to deal with these. They are called tank traps. Hansersperre. You have right, tank traps. These are long lines of giant concrete blocks specifically designed to block out tanks. And if you go to the French-speaking region, Suis Roman, along the Swiss side of the lake between Geneva and Lausanne, you'll find these lines of tank traps that stretch all the way from the lakeside into the mountains. Yeah, you see them all over Switzerland and also Austria in the mountains. It's crazy. And do you see these houses? They're actually bunkers, disguised as houses. And here, the Swiss hid cannons they could use when the tanks tried to go over the tank traps. But the cannons wouldn't be pointed at the tank directly though. Instead, they would be aimed at the belly of the tank, where there was little armor. It's genius, but, but also quite terrifying. Although I do find this one instance where Switzerland threatened Germany a tad more terrifying. You see, this river is called the Rhine. The head of this river is right here within Switzerland's borders. And it runs through a large part of Western Germany and eventually ends up here in the Netherlands. What's terrifying is that Switzerland threatened to poison the Rhine and in turn all of Germany's water if they had made it. A little aggressive Switzerland, I gotta say, but fair play. Now obviously this never happened. 
at least on purpose. You see, Switzerland did actually poison the Rhine in the 1980s, but that was considered an accident. But ultimately, it shows the Swiss commitment to keep enemies from even thinking about invading their country. What is weird though is that Hitler actually did have a very detailed plan to invade Switzerland. Oh. And while he saw it as a challenge, it could certainly be done. So why didn't he? Well, it's quite a complex topic, and the Swiss, as well as historians, don't completely agree on why Hitler didn't attack them. Some strongly believe that it was the strong Swiss military and the graduate strategy in the Alps that saved them. Others say it was the cooperation with Nazi Germany as it's likely the Nazis preferred to bank with them, so they just let them stay neutral because of it. Historians say that both were needed, and that another important reason was that Germany had a hard time in Russia. Germany could have easily invaded Switzerland, but it would have cost them too many resources, which Germany just couldn't afford to lose at this time, because their Russian expedition had bad luck. The cooperation with Switzerland also proved quite useful to the Germans, as Switzerland had to deliver resources on credit to Germany, which they obviously didn't need to pay for upfront as part of a contract. Additionally, Germany could sell their gold to the Swiss National Bank in exchange for foreign currencies without proving its origin. This way, they could sell gold they had stolen from countries they had invaded. In return for this, Switzerland could stay out of the war and. Yeah. You know, all the Nazis, they stored their gold and all the riches they made, like plundering all the other countries in Switzerland. And then when they lost the war, the Nazis and all the gold they, they stored in the vaults in Switzerland. Guess who took ownership of that riches? Did it go back to the countries it was taken from? <laughs> of course not. The Swiss kept it. And it's probably one of the reasons they are so rich today. They just kept all the riches from the Nazis. Continue trading with allies for food and coal, which they really needed. Now, since the war ended, these things have shown to be quite controversial. I don't personally have an opinion on this, but had Switzerland not done these things, they wouldn't have been the neutral nation we know them as today. So the continuancy of Swiss independence and neutrality is a result of many different factors. But above all, the Swiss made sure that none of the parties in a war would benefit from attacking them. And that's the mentality they've kept to this day although they aren't as insane about it as they were back then. For example, the Swiss military said in 2014 that they had removed all bombs and explosives from their infrastructure. Well done, Switzerland. Mm. That's probably for the best. But in terms of bunkers and tank traps, they are all still here. Because might as well be, right? You never know when theirs could become useful. But all in all, Switzerland remains the most unconquerable country on Earth as a result of its continuing desire to stay neutral. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Well, thank you for making such a great video, OBF. Go subscribe to OBF if you enjoyed this video. This was very interesting and it's crazy to think what uh, lengths the Swiss have gone uh, to to not be conquered or to establish a defense, not even having a threat, like a real threat after the Nazis, I would guess, having kept the bombs for so long in the country. Certainly learned something with this video and uh, I see you guys tomorrow in another video.